Well, we're at one of those awkward times in the church calendar where it collides with the secular can uh, calendar. January 4th is the 11th day of Christmas, which means tomorrow is the 12th day of Christmas, and that makes it the final day of feasting that leads from the celebration of Jesus' birth to the arrival of the Magi, or Jesus' baptism, depending on which of the three church years we're in. But as far as the rest of the world is concerned, it's the fourth day of a new year. Christmas is a distant memory. Most of our resolutions have already failed. And we're probably now back to work or school and all the ordinary challenges and mundane activities that too often feel more like a daily grind than a daily life. Which is precisely why we need a reminder that Christmas isn't just a holiday but instead it points to a reality that infiltrates our whole life and there could be no better passage to remind us of the ongoing significance of Christmas than it is this reading from John. Why? Because John invites us to contemplate a non-sentimental Christmas that fills us with hope and joy all year long, no matter what happens, no matter what life brings to us. So here are my three thoughts this morning about John's extraordinary Christmas story. First, notice that his story has no angels, no shepherds, and seems to know nothing of a young mother or three wise men. Indeed, John's story is hardly about the birth of Jesus at all, but instead it focuses on the difference that that birth makes for all of us. John begins his gospel with this beautiful poem, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then he follows with these words. And this Word that was with God and is God became flesh and dwelt among us. And there it is, John's Christmas story. The story of God becoming human, taking on our lot and our life that we might live and love and struggle and die with hope. But that's not all John offers, which brings me to my second thought. Because while John sums up the Christmas story in two lines, he spends more time on the significance of Christmas by shifting our attention from Jesus' birth to ours. In fact, John is actually less interested in the birth of a babe in Bethlehem than he is in the birth of you and me as children of God. Listen again to the verses that we often skip over in our haste to get to the close of his two-verse Christmas story. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of a human, but of the will of God. Did you catch that? Jesus came so that we might become children of God. Children, that is, who are not ruled by the circumstances in which we find ourselves in life. Children who are not defined by our limitations or our hurts. Children whose destinies are not controlled by somebody else. Rather, we are people who know ourselves to be God's beloved children. And this means that no matter what good or what bad things we carry around with us in our lives, God has called us to be God's own children, in individuals 
who hold infinite worth in God's eyes. People who deserve love and respect and people who God will use to care for God's beloved world. Can you imagine that? Can we imagine that Jesus came and was born and lived and died and was raised again not to pay some obscure penalty for sin, but instead, John says he came to remind us and even convince us that God loves us more than anything. Children of God. And more than that, can we practice that? Which brings me to my third thought. An invitation to you to begin today and continue for the rest of January. A simple but profound exercise. Once a day. And it might be easier if it's the same time each day. Once a day, look in the mirror and say this. I am God's child, deserving of love and respect. And God will use me to change the world. I am God's child, deserving of love and respect. And God will use me to change the world. Sound easy? Well, in my experience, these words are hard to say and even harder to believe. Which is why we need to do it every day for the rest of the month. Try that. Because the first few times you say it as you're looking at yourself in the mirror, it's hard to look at ourselves in the mirror for one thing, and then add these words on top of that, well, you're likely not to believe it. Instead, you believe all kinds of negative things about yourself. They'll creep in and they'll voice doubts about what you're confessing. It will sound different for each one of you, of course, but many of these negative messages that will run through your head will sound something like this. You? A child of God? Well, what about your failed marriage? Or your failed job? What about when you disappointed your parents? or you disappointed your children. And don't forget those mistakes that you've made in your life. Yeah, maybe God loves you, but you don't really deserve all that love, and you're certainly not in a position to change yourself, let alone the world. Ever have any thoughts like that go through your head? That's why John's unsentimental Christmas message is so important because in the face of all the negative messages that might be rooted in something that really happened yeah yeah we need a different message because we've all made mistakes and John asserts what is definitely true about each and every one of us and it's this that Jesus gives each one of us the power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of a human, but who were born because of the will of God. I just read something recently or heard something in a couple different places about the human genome, that it is an utter miracle that each and every one of us were born just think about it. All the, the sperm and the eggs that could have come together and didn't of every human being on this earth who ever lived. And the chance that that particular sperm and that particular egg came together and formed you is an utter miracle. Scientists are calling it a miracle. Imagine that. We call it the will of God. created you. And nothing can change that. So say these, say these words with me so that you can say them each day for this month, the rest of this month. I am God's child, deserving of love and respect, and God 
God will use me to change the world. Say it with me. I am God's child, deserving of love and respect, and God will use me